Hi, I'm Ivan from Webwash, and in this video, I will show you how to set up open graph tags for Facebook in Drupal using the meta tag module. Open graph tags, or OG for short, are used by Facebook to create rich snippets when you add a link into Facebook. When a link is provided, Facebook will scrape the page and look for these meta tags and it'll generate a preview snippet of the page. And there is a debugging tool for these snippets, which I'm on right now. And here you can see in the link preview section, you can see a preview of the snippet. Now, this is a link to a tutorial on Webwash. And then below the snippet, you can actually see the OG tags, which are on the site. And this debugger is very useful uh, when you are setting up these OG tags. So if someone on Facebook links to a web wash tutorial, which I think everyone should do, but if somebody links over to a web wash tutorial, they will see this snippet appear in their feed. And that is thanks to open graph tags. So how do you set up all of this stuff in Drupal? Well, luckily for us, there is a module called meta tag. And if you want to learn more about it, just head over to drupal.org slash project slash meta tag. And chances are you already have this module because this module is used to control all of the meta tags on your Drupal site. And it comes with a sub module called meta tag open graph. So all we need to do is download this module, install meta tag, meta tag open graph, and also token, which has a dependency on this module, which is a required dependency, sorry and then configure a few things and that's it. Let me now show you how to set up open graph tags on an article content type. But the first thing we need to do is download the module. So let's jump over to our terminal and download it using Composer. So I'll type in Composer, require Drupal slash meta tag, all one word. And you will notice that it's downloading token, which is a dependency for the module, but chances are you already have token installed. Now, you may have noticed that my development environment is looking a little different because the terminal is in a browser. And the reason for this is because I am using a service called gitpod.io. Well, it's called gitpod, but you can learn more about it by going to gitpod.io. And that service is a service that allows you to spin up development environments in the cloud. Well, when I say cloud, it's technically some other person's server, but you know what I mean. Um, and the reason for this, the reason why I want this dev site to be on the cloud or publicly accessible on the internet is because this Facebook debugger only works if your site is accessible. Facebook needs to access it. Now, of course, Facebook can't access my my local site. So that is why I am using this Git pod. Um, the service is awesome. I've just started to use it. Um, so there you go, a free plug for the service. So, so if you want to learn more about it, just head over to gitpod.io and I may in the future do a few videos on using this service because it is brilliant. And also it's not slowing down my machine because I'm on a Mac because Docker is very slow on a Mac. That's the joke there. There you go. Okay. So now that we have the module downloaded, let's jump over to our site. So here is our website. And this is a stock standard Drupal site. The only thing that I've done is I have created this test article and I have added in some content such as a body, also added um, an image to the image field. And I've also created a media field because I want to show you how to use an image in the OG tags, as well as um, an image uploaded to a media field. Because if you are building brand new Drupal sites, you should be using a media field instead of just an image field directly on the content type. So that is the only two things that I've done. So the first thing we'll need to do you scroll all the way up and then go to extend. And then let's search for media. And you'll see that you have the main media module, but you also have all of these other sub modules. So make sure you install meta tag and also meta tag open graph and then click on install. 
And then it'll also ask you to install token if it's not already installed, but chances are you have token already installed. Now that the module has been installed, let's go and configure the meta tags. So click on configuration and then click on meta tag and then click on add default meta tags. And from the type drop down, select article because we want to set up these meta tags just on the article content type and then click on save. And the reason why this is important is because if you click on browse available tokens, you can't see the nodes context here. But if we close this and click on save and then scroll down and then click on edit again on content article default, and then click on browse available tokens again, you will see that we get this node context. So that's very important. If you know all of the node tokens that you wanna use off by heart, then you don't have to worry about it, but it's always good to make sure you can see this nodes context in tokens. Okay, let's just close that. Now, if we click on open graph, we can see all of the available meta tags. Now, don't worry, there's a lot here, but we'll just focus on the important ones. Let's scroll all the way back up. And the ones that I will focus on right now, if I can find the correct ones, okay, is here content type. So this content type has nothing to do with the Drupal content type. It is uh, the content type relative to Facebook. So because this is an article, I know it'll be article and then the page URL will be, and I know this off by heart because I've been using token for so long, would be colon, node colon URL, but you can easily just click on browse available tokens. Let me bring this back up, resize this, click on nodes. And then if you want to use this, let me slide this down. Oh, this is a bit tricky, this, this pop-up, this token pop-up. Okay. Let's put the cursor in title and then all you need to do is find the title token, which is this one, and then click and then click on it and then it'll pre-populate it. Now for description, because we are using the standard body field, of course, we don't want to add all of the content from the body field. Instead, we want to add a truncated version of the body field and we can do that by using the special node colon summary token which means it'll give us a truncated version of the body field. And then image will be, if we find the image field right here, just click on image and pop that in. And I believe that is it. So article, node URL, title, description, and image. All right, perfect. And then we scroll all the way down and then click on save. And then, very important, clear your cache uh, because it is cached. So let's go to configuration, performance, and then clear all caches. Let's go back to meta tag and back to the home page. then right click and view page source. And we should see the OG tags right here. Here we go. We have the type, which is article. We have the URL, which is the node path to the actual page, then we have title and a description, and then finally image, which is a direct path to an image, I believe. Let's just double check that. Okay, it is perfect. And now all we need to do is let's grab this URL and go to this sharing debugger, chuck it in there, and then click on debug. And let me just go scrape again because Facebook does cache this. And I did test this out before the before I started recording the video. So I wanna make sure that everything's all right. Now, up the top here, you will get warnings for certain properties. Um, this one is missing the FB app ID. And I do believe that if you put in an app ID, which means you need to create an application through Facebook, it can give you analytics or some type of insight, but do, but do your own research on that. And then if you scroll down, you can see the actual link preview with the feature image, the URL, the title, the description. And then if we, then if we scroll further down, we can see extra information. And there you go. Okay, so that is how you set up OG tags using 
an image field. Now I want to show you how to use it on a media field because things get a little tricky with a media field. Let's jump back to our site. So let me just close a few of these tabs. There's too many tabs here. Okay. And back to configuration, meta tag, content article. Let's edit it and let's scroll all the way down and let's get rid of this. Let's have a look at the tokens. Okay. Open this up. So we have media, which is our field. So I just called it field underscore media. And then again, click on field underscore media colon entity. And if we scroll down, we have a few options here. Of course, we can put in then this field media image, which is the image field on the media type. But this then makes it difficult for us to use other media types as the featured asset. Because just imagine this, what if you want a YouTube video to be a featured asset or just an image? How do you handle that? Well, the media module comes with this special property called thumbnail. And this thumbnail can be a resized image if you just uploaded an image. But if you added a YouTube video to be your featured asset, it'll be the actual thumbnail of the YouTube video. So what I'll do is I'll select thumbnail and make sure that is in there, perfect. And then if we close that and then scroll all the way down and click on save. Let's go to content. Let's also clear the cache. Don't forget that. And then while that's doing it, let's go and edit the article. Then here you can see our featured image, which is coming from the media field. And I've actually added the word media field in red. So I know that it's different. And then if we click on save, which will also probably clear a few caches. And then if we go to our test article and you can see the image down at the bottom. And then if we view the page source, let's also do a hard refresh. We can see that this image has changed before it was just meta tag featured image. Now it's meta tag featured image media.png. And if I copy that and chuck it into another browser tab, you can see that it is the featured image on the media field because I've added in this nice red text, which says media field. Let's go back to our debugger tool here on Facebook and click on scrape again. That's all what you need to do to test it out. And then you can see that is pulling in the image from the media field. And then if we scroll down, we can see that, yes, the OG image is different. Now let's test it with a YouTube video. So let's just imagine we now wanna change the featured media asset from an image to an actual YouTube video. Let's go back to our test article. Let's go and edit our article. We'll remove the media asset, click on add media again, and click on remote video. And here is a remote video, which I just added. You can see the actual thumbnail here and then click on save. Let's view the page source. The URL hasn't changed. If I do a hard refresh, oh, there we go, that actually changed. And you can see the path to the image has changed. It's not linking directly to YouTube. Instead, the media module has downloaded a copy of the thumbnail to the files directory. So if we copy that and throw that in another browser, this should be the actual thumbnail of the video. Perfect. Close that. Let's clear the cache again. And finally, close a few of these tabs. If we scrape again, and now you can see that the featured image is the thumbnail from the YouTube video. So that is how you can set up open graph tags on a content type with an image field or a media field.
That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about Drupal and other web technologies, head over to webwash.net and also don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.